Dean, what is it about the question, why is there something rather than nothing, is so bedeviling? Uh, the question, why is there something rather than nothing, is to me and to most people the ultimate question. The, and by that I mean the deepest question that you can ask. It's at the, the root of all other forms of being. Because what you're asking is why is there being itself? You know, not why does this object X exist? Why is there existence itself? Which is, you don't get deeper a question than this particular question. It's no much way. deeper than why is this universe. Most people think it's kind of the same thing. It's absolutely right, not. Right, exactly. The universe um, it is an, an instance of being, right? It's something that exists. Yes. It doesn't encompass existence itself. Um, moreover, it's also a concrete object. To me, the question, why is there something rather than nothing, encompasses things like abstract objects, possibilia, things that might exist, numbers, concepts, um, musical pieces that have never been um, played, you know, because they didn't get composed on that particular day. A so possibility. There are, exactly, there are a whole range of things that are included in existence. Generally, when people say, why exist, why does something exist, they're talking about specific objects. And right? to relate that to the universe, the way most people think about it, and pe and when people talk about how the universe is going to exist, they start with the laws of physics, mm -hmm. and they generate through quantum foam or fluctuations. But what, when you're asking why is there existence, that is underneath the laws of physics. No, exactly. The laws of physics are some things, just like any other things. Right, space-time is a something just like any other kind of thing. So you really need to look much deeper to get a, an explanation of why is there something rather than nothing. Now when you begin to think about it, you can think that, there, that when you really understand it, you can think there's absolutely no progress you can make. Because it seems like it's impossible to go further from that because uh, what can you say? Well, this is one of the reasons why people find philosophers interesting, I think, is because they generally don't play the game and they'll try and destroy any question like this. And the way you destroy this particular question is by following the path. Um, in order to try and explain something, usually you need to invoke some other kinds of things. right? So you'll generally have a conclusion, which in this case we're trying to work out why existence. So existence will be our conclusion. Well, what things can you put up here in the premise that will have this as a conclusion. You can only put what? Concrete things that exist. So you can't assume existence in order to prove existence or demonstrate that it comes out of some kind of argument because you just argued in a circle, right? So a philosopher might say, well, therefore this problem has no answer because there are no premises, no things that you could put in in order to get this out as an explanation, as an answer or a conclusion of, of some argument. So how are we supposed to argue if you can never get the conclusion out? right? Yeah. And therefore people will say it's a brute fact, something that it's there and you can't explain it. That's the usual... Uh, that, cop out. I think it's a cop out. <laughs> and, I, and though I'm a philosopher, and, I can, uh, and that's the usual method of a philosopher, is to try and question the question and maybe say, look, although this looks like a reasonable question, why is there something rather than nothing? Maybe it's not quite the same as a usual question because the conclusion really doesn't quite, you know, submit to the same kind of analysis. Okay, now how do you go after that question? So the problematic approach, which leads to, you know, trying to dismiss the whole idea of the, que of the question, involves the idea that you're going to, that existence is contingent, right? So if, if existence is contingent, then it might have been otherwise. Anything that's contingent means it could have been otherwise. Um, now one way that philosophers think about could have been otherwise is to invoke a world, another possible world, in which that otherwise is instantiated. When you look at the question why is there something rather than nothing, what kind of world could instantiate there being nothing? When we're talking about nothing in, in this much uh, more sense. serious sense, I literally Nothing. I mean, really nothing. How, what, what possible object or possible world could function as the thing that makes it true that there might have been nothing? Right? If you might have been Prime Minister, then there will be a world in which Robert Kuhn is, pri is Prime Minister of England. Right? There might have the been nothing. The would have sent on the Empire much earlier. Right. <laughs> but, it, but if you think in terms of 
nothingness. It's possible that there might be nothing. But what thing is performing that role of making it true that there might be nothing? Therefore, from a logical point of view, it looks like there's something necessary to the to existence. Right? It's not possible that there might have been nothing. Because for that to be possible, you need a world or some way of representing there being nothing. And how do you do that? So, so you're claiming that, that it, it is necessary that there is something because you cannot induce nothing from the so-called subtraction argument where you take things out of the world and, and to finally get to nothing. You're saying that's a logical impossibility. Yeah, I mean, so the subtraction argument is one particular way of arguing for the necessity of existence. And it's what um, a particular type of metaphysician called a combinatorialist would use. So a combinatorialist says that when you're talking about possibilities, right, it's possible that this book had a different author or whatever, then you have to construct those possibilities from some other kinds of facts. You might think, as the philosopher David Lewis did, that there are real flesh and blood worlds that are what make statements about possibilities true. Or you might say we can reassemble concretely existing things in order to generate new possibilities. Now, how do you generate the possibility of nothing from worlds or concretely existing things? You say that's you just impossible. Can't. You can't. Therefore, it's, it, from this point of view, it looks like a logical necessity that there has to be something. Aren't you looking at it from just from the reality of, of something? Couldn't you think about it in exactly the reverse? That, um, that some things are things that therefore each of the pieces are contingent. So each of the some things are contingent. Don't you have to find some objects of any kind, concrete, abstract, that, that, are, that, that violate that principle? That, that you have to say are necessity of themselves? Well, any concrete object will be contingent. I mean, it stands to reason that a concrete object could, might not have existed. There's no concrete object I can think of that sure. violates that. Right. Right. So, so you're going to have to go beyond concrete objects. If you want some, if you want some, some things to explain uh, the necessity of existence, you can't use concrete objects because they have contingent existence. So one possibility is to look to logic or mathematics because they have a completely different kind of existence. They have a necessary existence. In, in terms of logicians, modal logicians who deal with possibility and necessity, they're true in all possible worlds. So that Any mathematical formulation, 2 plus 2 equals 4, or whatever you want to say, right. it's impossible for that not to exist, which means it exists in any possible right. world. Exactly. You have to have that true. Exactly. And so that then, then your point is, because it's existing in every possible world, it, it is logically a necessity to have that in existence, which therefore says existence is a necessity. In, in that, that the existence of numbers is a necessity. So that's, I'm taking that as a given, right? The existence of, we're, we're trying to deal with why is there something rather than nothing. We want an explanation for that. One, and the, these aren't, these don't look like numbers, right? So we, we want to appeal to something completely different. Now numbers have the status of nece necessary objects. It seems that existence must, ex you know, must be a necessary thing for the reasons, you know, I gave earlier, namely, um, it doesn't make logical sense to think of there being nothing because you don't have a possible world available to represent there being nothing. A mathematical object, if you might be able to invoke their properties in order to explain the objects in this world and in any world and a anything basically.